So I wanted to do a video on live hinging for a vacuum bagged wing. It's probably the most common question I receive during these builds. And I also think it intimidates a lot of new builders. But I'm going to share with you some of my tips and suggestions on how I do this. So a little bit about the wing first. It's green foam from Lowe's, vacuum bagged with CarboWeave 30. The trailing edge is doubled top and bottom. The hinge is 1.7 ounce Kevlar on the bias. I have about a 12 inch drag spar in the center and the control surfaces are not faced. Um, I used to face control surfaces but I've found that most of my DLAM issues were from the center panel separating on hard landings. So the drag spar has seemed to cure my DLAM issues of the hinges and I found that it just wasn't worth the time and effort and extra weight to continue to face my control surfaces. I know structurally it's the right thing to do, but I've gotten away from it. So here's the tools for the job. A permagrid stick, folded over sandpaper, a diamond file from Harbor Freight, a pull saw, lots of fresh razor blades, and a block sander. And all my block sander is is a square piece of foam with sandpaper spray glued to it. So here's the wing tip we're going to hinge. It's a three-piece wing with a six servo design. So we're going to have to split the flap here for the outer flap and aileron. The trailing edge has been trimmed, the leading edge is sanded, and the root has been beveled for the dihedral break between the two wingtip panels. So the first thing we're going to do is split the two flaps, the flap from the aileron. And you notice here I have everything marked out, uh, but unfortunately my mylar uh, this is where my mylar splits for the dihedral break. There's also another dihedral break here. Didn't quite line up, so this line here actually represents where we're going to make the cut to split the two. So using a fresh razor blade, I'm going to cut straight down on this line between the two panels. Now I also have some unicarbon in here that makes this a little bit more difficult to get through. Now I'm going to take our folded over sandpaper and start to work it between these two panels. That's pretty close. That's not bad. Um, I'll square these up a little bit better once we get them free, but uh, that's through two layers of four ounce uni and four layers of carbo weave, so it's a little bit of tough going, um, but that's how you get your gap here for your two panels so these two surfaces don't interfere with each other. So we're getting ready to cut our wing, and we're just going to verify that our hinge and Kevlar are on the bottom, and we're going to cut the top of the wing. Our first cut is going to be the skin only between our two marks and then we're going to go back and cut the foam. And my first tip is that when we're cutting the foam we're going to do it at a slight bevel. Now this is exaggerated but we want it just off of 90. So I'm using a pretty wide ruler here and I've put some electrical tape here on the bottom to give it just a little bit of grip. So we're all lined up here and I got a fresh razor blade and I'm just going to cut the skin. Just doing really, really light passes. And we can kind of hear that we're not cutting the skin anymore. So I'm just going to move down here and get this section where that uni is for the extra strength of the dihedral break. So now that the skin's cut, we're going to go and cut our foam down to the Kevlar underneath. This is another one of those steps where it might be best to do it over the side of your workbench but I've just weighted the front here and put the ruler underneath the wing so that as I'm cutting, I'm actually pushing down on the control surface 
to give the knife just a little bit of room to work as we cut down through. So again, we're going to put that tiny little bevel on the wing as we cut down. And you could feel it dragging on the Kevlar. This is a pretty thin wing, but it might take three or four passes on some wings to get all the way down to the Kevlar. And you can see how that's starting to open up. And you can hear it dragging on the Kevlar. Now we're going to cut the skin behind our first cut here to create the bevel so that our control surface to move up. So I'm just going to line up the ruler and you want it a little bit wider at the root than out here towards the tip. But it doesn't need to be a super exaggerated amount. And I'm just guessing here. But we have about maybe just over an eighth here and about an eighth of an inch there. And we're just going to cut the skin. Now we're just going to pull this up. So I went ahead and cut the ply off camera you can see I just cut it straight down here and I draped it over the edge of the work table so that I could put a little bit of pressure here and open up that cut so that the saw has just a little bit more room to work just like how we did here with our foam and our razor blade. Now we got our wing flipped over and we're getting ready to sand in our hinge and since everything's cut free you can see if I put a little bit of pressure on here you can see where our cut is on the bottom. So I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure here and go through and mark exactly where our hinge wants to be. So now we're getting ready to file in our hinge, filing through the carbo weave down to the Kevlar. This is the trailing edge here and you can see the marks here. And the ruler is aft of those marks. Again, we want to continue that bevel through the foam down to the hinge. So I want to sand in my hinge slightly behind even where that natural hinge point is of the cut. So it's the same thing, we're just going to start light. And start making our way down through the carbo weave. You definitely don't want to press hard here because you'll snag the Kevlar. You can see we're starting to break the surface of the Kevlar. And that's all the farther you want to take that. 
So now we've scored our carbo weave down to the Kevlar, the full length, and we're just going to start to work this hinge until it will fold over on itself. Basically all we have left to do is sand away this excess foam. So here's the wing sitting on its uh, leading edge and we're just folding the flap over on itself and we're going to sand away this piece of foam that's left here to create our bevel. Now the reason I'm sanding this is because you'll see a lot of guys make this cut and they'll make this cut and they don't ever really match where the hinge is. In this way we have a nice clean cut here and we'll have a nice looking clean surface here at the bevel. You can get carried away since you're sanding you have to be extra careful that you're actually not sanding the hinge because if you are careless you'll sand right through your Kevlar and you won't have a hinge left. So here's our completed hinged outer flap. We got the bevel in there. You can see how the control surface moves pretty freely up. And on the bottom, there's no binding, and the pan will easily fold over on itself. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something about hinging a foam panel wing.